Hello everyone, uh, good evening. Today is December 7th. Another episode of Ripster Daily Trade Recaps and Teachings. Um, I was speaking a little slow today, guys. Um, just uh, under the weather, my throat is still messed up. But I uh, just wanted to get the recaps out today because there were definitely some you know, good lessons to be learned today and some good trades that need a recap. So anyways, as always, guys, um, this morning I was up 45 minutes before the market open. I went through all the news sources and I create my watch list. Um, I'm on live screen at the open. I create my watch list live and this was my watch list. Chewy, AI, BRZE, MDB, D-Dog, Coin, Rivian, Dollar General. Then our focus was also on AMD and NVIDIA today because of the big, big, big um, event yesterday, right? But we don't get biased in, but our systems told us long, we longed. And we'll talk about Meta, AMD, NVIDIA. We'll talk a little bit about Tesla and, um, you know, loser on AI. Why was it a loser? And then, um, you know, uh, then other midday trades, SPY and QQQ, how, how we traded SPY QQQ today. So we'll discuss that. Um, these are the levels that I create every day. And um, most of these levels, again, were on the point today. Um, the pivot levels and were on the point. And, uh, you know, especially for Meta, I said watch one hour turn bullish. And the Meta also, uh, you know, really, really uh, went crazy today on the move. So you can take a screenshot of all these levels and then, um, you know, review them, how they worked out on today's trade. All right, guys, uh, let's start, uh, you know, try, I'm going to try to keep it uh, just quick today because, uh, uh, you know, because, <laughs> because of my voice. Okay, let's start. So let's quickly look at the loser. Why was AI loser today? Uh, AI never really went either side. It just chopped in the range and then it chopped us out. So my AI plan was if it gets over the EMA clouds, then it will be reversal long. And if it breaks the pre-market low, it will be reversal short, right? And then when it was trying to push, I try to scalp it the long side, right? To B minus, all this, it's as a B minus. It's against the uh, trend trade, but it never really could push. It never really could push uh, convincingly and it failed. Once it failed 25, 7, 8, 80, I turned bearish. So then I turned bearish on AI. And I showed it, it, even though I knew there was a strong, strong 25 psychological support right under there. But um, either way, I was short. But right away after when I was short, I realized that it's not going to work. You see my comments here. Um, you know, my first target is 25. Although we hit 25.12, I didn't really close my position. I was hoping we break 25. But when the second candle was higher low, I knew it's not going to work third candle was higher low, I had a doubt it's not going to work. And then fourth candle higher low. And then those were the warnings I was giving, no lower lows, looks like we chop. And then I said, I'm going to scratch it. Then I cut it finally, you know, because it, it was going, you know, um, control the loose because it's neither going up, neither going down. And um, just took a quick loss and moved on. So you understand, right? So you need to see those higher lows when you're trading in the morning to confirm your short and read this, you know, pause the video, read my comments here, and then watch what, what did the stock do, right? All right, next one. So the, the next one, guys, we are look, going to look is coin. So coin was one working trade this morning. Let's see what I was talking about the coin. So my, my point on coin today was that I'm only interested if coin gets over 133. And, um, you know, and that's what it did. It stopped, it pushed over 133. And that's when I started long and I said stops should be under 33. Long move the stops under 33. Actually, the stops should be under 34.50. I realized that 133 might be a wrong stop. So we need it under this, this EMA clouds 3450 right here, trailing stops in the EMA clouds. And then, then it was all about letting the coin work. You can see my comments here. My first target was 136.60. We met that. Then my next target was 138. And then we were profitable, right? And we logged our profits into that, uh, you know, that target of, uh, 
into 138. So it was a good trade today. Uh, coin has uh, been paying us really nice of late. And uh, you know, so you can clearly see the setup. Uh, EMA clouds turned bullish. So there was a clean, clean setup. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, guys, let's look at another um, another trade this morning, BRZE. Um, BRZE was, uh, was a setup a gap. Uh, it had an earning. It did not hold the EMA clouds. Then it broke yesterday's lows. It broke all the pivot points. So, you know, yesterday's highs, it broke that pivot point, yesterday's lows. Uh, in the morning, uh, you can see I said short, watch the pops at 9.38, good short. I said short working. And um, then we were just locking it um, from that short. It started at the open <coughs> right from $57. You went all the way to 52 and I was out when it started to curl right here. So BRZ was an easy short and um, good trade there. I love these setups when they work because especially when they give up the gap and go under the gap, they are even, um, even better trades because then they can drop much lower because they didn't even hold the gap and, and then they came much under that gap and look where it went. So guys, yeah, this was uh, BRZE. So you can see here yesterday, bearish yesterday, high break yesterday, low break, and then all, all the way trade down under. Let's look at the next one. So um, guys, for Nvidia, I've been bullish since morning because of uh, AMD. And uh, I took a starter right in the morning on, on Nvidia. If you see, um, I said 456 was my risk. So all day that was the starter risk was 456. And my and then it was all about targets. Over 4460, 462. And then we met our 462 target. And then I said if SPY break out, we can long again. Because the morning trade, we took the morning trade, morning scalp. Then it held EMA out, bounced again over 458. And then I said you can now risk 458 then you can long it again and then then after that it was all about just holding the trend right so you see my guidance um, my targets were meeting seller 462.48 I said hold for the next leg up I was scaling out holding most and then you know so you can see um, you can pause and see my live guidance on Nvidia here so Nvidia I'm swinging some now so it was all day uh, steady 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 Nvidia and there was, um, you know, no need to cut NVIDIA. You see there was a morning trade and then there was a dip trade. So all those trades on NVIDIA were present there that you could take. <clears throat> so yeah, you can, you can clearly see why I was bullish, right? There was an EMA cloud reversal. So there was this reversal here. So you can see there was this reversal right here and that's why i gave two risks i gave a risk of 456 i gave that risk first then i gave risk of 458 so morning trade risk held and the second trade risk held so it was all about then it was all about this all day all day move up you know uh, like a nice channel that was moving up today so that was all uh, about uh, nvidia today you know you just had to hold that trend line and ride it back up so if i move this down I, you can clearly see a nice little channel going up on nvidia all day so now let's look look at the crazy play today uh, you know amd so amd guys so Yesterday, everybody knows, so yesterday was the event and we were selling the news and we were short on that event yesterday. And but, but the event was very bullish. The things fundamentally they talked about were very bullish. So I was definitely, it was my top watch AMD today. And we were watching, of course, we just wanted to make sure that we don't get stuck in the gap phase, right? Otherwise it was our top, uh, top, top watch uh, today. So let's see how we traded AMD. Um, let's see. Before I go there, let me let me show you your, your my pivot pivot levels that I gave, right? 
So here are my pivot levels. So my pivot level on AMD was 120, 50 and 121, right? So 121 was the huge, huge, huge pivot level. As you see here, I gave this level AMD 120, 50, 121 you know pivot level so i already gave those levels before the market open and then once it broke out let's see what was my comments uh, i said versus 120 is your first long trade let's look here let's 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 go let's find out one second so yeah so when it was pushing versus 120 right that was my first comment because 120 I didn't take the position right away because it was up and down, it up and down, and then it finally pushed over 120. That was okay too. So that was the first move. Then, then I said 123 is a key pivot to take some profits. And then we watch if it breaks out of that. And then after that, it was pulling back. I was talking about this level 121 that I gave in the pre-market sheet and then it started bounce so that's where you enter you see the reversal your stop should be under 121 pivot that i gave and then it's all about riding the trend and if you are in options use your profit to log you know to move into the next option so here you see i said bouncing of the 121 support and then it was all about trading amd and then um, so it was at 124 let's see what targets what i was giving yeah 125 psychology was another target and then there was uh, 125.73 then 127.30 you can see right here that was my target 125.73 and um, but it went to, and then i did say use profits for further lotos uh, that means that you can use your profit to get some more options and it was all day just flagging, flagging, flagging. Nothing is too high. You know, you just hold and trade it all day long. You know, you just need your risk levels. And look at this concept of retest I teach. Push, retest, push. Push, retest, push. So you can clearly see this concept. So you better learn this concept. It's a very important concept. So yeah, AMD was a big, huge win there. All right, let's quickly look at IWM here. So IWM was, um, I was kind of on, on IWM since, you know, uh, you know, so initially there was no strength, but then once I saw the bullishness come back, that's when I said I will look for entry versus 184. So I gave this risk level 184 right here, little under here because that was under EMA clouds and psychological level. And then, you know, I risk like 30, 40 cents. And then it went on to 185.49. So almost a dollar move, decent, decent move on the options as well. So that was guys, IWM trade. So you can uh, pause the screen and see my comments here, what I'm saying. But that was IWM trade. Okay, let's go to the next one. So I want to quickly want to talk about SPY and QQQ uh, trades this morning. I mean, um, so I, I was talking about this. It was a bullish bullish trend, right? It, it pulled back, it held 512. It was kind of choppy here, but when the market was doing this, means it's strong. This is the breakout I gave at the end of the day, these breakouts and they kind of panned out. So, so when you see that, uh, this kind of action, when you see this red candle being reclaimed, this means it's going to get squeezed and get much higher. So nothing special there. Market was bullish. Uh, we were on the right. We were not never. I mean, we scalped short on these things, just small scalp, but we were never fully bearish biased on the markets. These were B minus shorts on 512 breaks. So 512 breaks here, I shorted here. 512 breaks here, I shorted here. And then I longed these breakouts as well. Just some small scalps. So nothing crazy there. Let's go to the next one. So Microsoft, uh, I was long in the morning. So I was long in the morning, it pushed to 370. And then, uh, you know, uh, 370.50, that was my target. I took it off half air when it was breaking down, I closed the trade. And even though it reclaimed later and pushed, but I didn't trade it, but you know, it's still reclaimed. But anyways, when this happens, if you are still in, this is your risk. Always, always, this is your risk. 
and if you see what I gave in my pre-market sheet Microsoft 365 AD right 365 AD so yeah nice winning scalp and then out of the Microsoft so let's look at Meta on Meta I clearly said one hour can turn bullish 316 318 40 your pivot levels and look what Meta did and I was on uh, voice saying that Micros Meta is the strongest one at the open. So I talked about it, strongest one at the open. And, um, and the flow was coming all day. And you see my pivots that I gave, it broke out of that pivot. And then, you know, it broke out of other pivots, yesterday's highs, and just kept rolling. <clears throat> Meta was not my personal trade. But I'm just showing you how my levels and my system and guidance helps everybody in the community. Um, I think there were a few people really did uh, really good on Meta today as well. You know, um, yeah, you can see, you know, uh, Meta was uh, really worked out for a lot of people in the community, you know, because they focus on the levels, they look at the plan, and you just have to focus on what works for you, right? You just don't have to wait for others to tell you what to trade, when to trade, what to buy. But the guidance helps everybody because we are a team and we work together um, to have a good day. So, all right, guys, what was the plan on Chewy today? The plan on Chewy was simple. There's a huge daily support at 1653. And I said it can be minus bounce if that support hold. And then 6083 were two levels that I gave everybody. And then it reclaimed the clouds. And, and most of everybody knows what happens when it reclaims the clouds. So when Chewy reclaims the cloud, that is the bullish bias. And that is a long trade. And it's it rarely happens. And uh, happened to us a few days ago, a few weeks ago on you. That it completely gap filled. Look where it found the resistance on the yesterday's uh, resistance level. So that's a beautiful, beautiful gap fill here, right here. You can see, right? The level risk levels I gave, 1683, and then there was a 1650. So you can easily trade with a pre-market risk. You know your risk long, and most mostly it works. When it doesn't work like AIE, you take a sh uh, loss and move on. But the levels always work. You have initial risk here. It turns bullish. You can add more into it. B minus bounce, and then becomes B plus bounce. Right, so Chewy was example of the EMA clouds power. Right, all right, next one. All right, so GameStop is also another example of the system. So you are bearish as long as under the clouds, but when it gets over the cloud, it's it's bullish, right? And I was talking about it's the same setup as Chewy, clear defined level. So 1350 was the risk level. If it broke 1350, I was bearish. But then uh, when it, it, you know, it held that level, then you turn bullish. Because when it gets over the cloud, EMA clouds, that's when you turn into a bullish bias. And then, you know, it, it even went more than where it came from. So the, you see how the push, retest of EMA clouds and continuously push. So that's how you, you know, that was a setup. So uh, pause and look at, you know, this Chewy and GameStop setups. Definitely these are reversal setups. Defined risk at 1350 and then push. All right, guys, let's look at uh, um, one midday trade for us on Google. Also, if you look at, uh, you know, my morning levels on Google, what was my pivot? Um, pivot that I gave on Google was uh, 135.25 and 135.60. 135.25, 135.60, both the pivots broke. But the real trade that came on Google was in mid, mid of the day when I said, look here what I said. I said, Google is flagging. I set a price alert. If it pushes over 137, we can get back to HOD. And look where it went from 137 to 138 and much more. Right? Repeatable pattern. You see me talking about it. All right, so Dollar General uh, was bullish to neutral. I ignored it at open because there was a low volume, but people in the community traded it. So there were two levels, 137.50, 136. 137.50 broke again, then 136 um, 
136 broke and then it was just a gap fill short setup you know it was a gap fill short setup on dollar general so that was the plan and um, you know if it held that level would have been long right so just a quick uh, review and those who watch my videos again and again know what i'm talking about here gap fill setup let's finally look at mdb so the mdb was uh, i mean it was a day to watch 380 or versus 388 this level so mdb when it started to push over 388 you know it took a little long uh, took a little long see what it does and um, it did push to like 397 right and our target was 340 but uh, but it never really it tanked right away so you know i barely cut took any off because you know i you know i really expected it to push but then when it it broke under the bearish clouds and then that's when i you know i scratched it you know i got out break even you know didn't get anything because it was back under clouds but then it did it did hold this level the same level and then it bounced but it was a scratch idea i mean um, you know never really worked but you know uh, this because when i see this like this candle when i see this candle i'm not interested so you know if it was working but when i saw this i had to get out because 388 gave up you get out and then not interested the whole day maybe tomorrow day three we will put maybe runs tomorrow who knows um so two days right in a row so we will we keep an eye you know it's a decent pullback Alright guys, that's it for today. Um, I'll see you uh, guys tomorrow. Hope you learned something today from these recaps. And uh, come join my community, trade with me. I love to have you uh, come for education and guidance. Do not come for blind alerts. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye.